did give a what's going on there. Yeah, he's grooving now. That's the way to be. Hello. Hello, Josh. How are, How you? are you? Yep, good. Excellent. Very synchronized. It was. It yeah. was. Hey, uh, we've already got our gins in hand. We tonight. do. Things are different tonight. It is a little bit different. Do you want to explain why? We um, I feel like we need a drum roll or something. All right. Press the button. We have a guest. We do. We have a vir- first Ta-da. virtual guest. <laughs> there he is. Ryan, how are you? Hello. Good, yourself? Good, mate. Do you want to give us a quick little, I mean, no, let's let's bump you up. Ryan is the uh, the videographer slash media manager slash marketing guru. Any more slashes in there? <laughs> um, general guy around the office. The best looking yep. guy in the office, uh, yep. the bearded chap uh, in Queensland, who uh, good buddies of ours, and and Ryan met Ryan earlier this year when he'd uh, you hadn't been there that long at that point, had you? Um, I've been here for like a year and a half. Oh, okay. So you've been there ever. a little while. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. And uh, Ryan was uh, yeah you know, is was there a couple of days a week and now full time and smashing goals with their marketing, their content. So what we you like. Thought we'd get him on the show and pick his brains about how smart he is on and what he's learnt and the journeys he's discovered and bits and pieces. So, Ryan, we're at the end of the year. You're just sort of coming off the end of Black Friday. How's the, the last week been for you? Um, it's been pretty crazy. But, like, we've sort of done a little bit of planning in terms of I already have a lot of footage of just products and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we didn't do too much in terms of content yep. for Black Friday. Um, we just did like a bunch of email marketing and, um, and then just general posts, just like, Hey, letting everybody know that we have a sale going on. Yep. Um, Putting the word yeah, out. too far into it. I don't know. Yeah. Very good. And do you want to, what, what we probably haven't topped off is that what the bearded chap do, who they are. So do you want to give us a quick little rundown on the bearded chap, Ryan, while Josh runs off? I'm going to try and find some bearded chap stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Ryan, do you want to give us a, the, the quick little uh, couple of liners of who they are and what you do? Um, yeah, well, so we're a men's grooming product company. Um, we make we started off as a beard grooming company uh, nine years ago, um, and quickly like with just a bottle of beard oil, and then quickly we discovered that beards aren't the only thing in men's grooming. Mm-hmm. Um, so we brought out deodorants, hair products. Uh, body care, everything we have now. Yep. Um, and yeah, our whole goal is to help men look and feel their best. Love it. It's great. It's uh, Josh run off. I think Josh going to get more products. But uh, one one question while Josh is not here, uh, I've got the seat. Oh damn, he's back. Ready? I was going to, there we go. There are all the products. Uh, the sea salt spray here. Um, I was just going to ask, is this is this edible? Um. <laughs> I'm going to say no. Out of um. <laughs> I was going to put in his drink because these are slightly salty uh, tonic waters we got. I was just going to add to it and be like, oh, it's really salty tonight. Anyway, the, the moment has passed. So, yeah, we've got beard oil. As you guys can t- tell, we are quite big fans of uh, of all this stuff. So, uh, excellent. Uh, good good to have here. One one day we might get Luke on the, on the show and, and give the funny story of how we actually ran into each other. But... That's for another. That's for another time. That's for another time. So, what? How did you get into the media world, Ryan? Give us a quick little bit of background on where your interest came from. Like, do you want the start start or like how I got the job? No, let's go. Let's go the start start. Where did your interest in in production or video or where your key production uh, key, key interest is? Um. Well, how I got into film work was. I was back in high school and we didn't have any film subjects or anything. I wasn't doing very well. Um, and then uh, we had this sort of thing where we go to our teachers and then there's like a career counselor sort of thing. Yep. And they pretty much put you on a path. And they pretty much just said, uh, all I can do because I wasn't doing any of the OP stuff, um, all I can pretty much do is just become a tradie. And I'm just like, all right, cool. So I took... Uh, film and TV on like, or like a extracurricular TAFE course, Mm -hmm. uh, just as a bit of a blood subject because (laughs) I heard that I could get Wednesday afternoons off. Um, and then made a short film about, (laughs) (laughs) made a short film about getting Uh, (laughs) Wednesday afternoons off. Yeah. I made a, I made a short film about, um, about, it was a horror film 
about a sock cult where people, uh, the cult leader would just hoard socks and they would kidnap people and take their socks and throw them out on the street. Um, I love it. Which was uh, interesting. But from there, I pretty much just like fell in love with filmmaking and just storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, and then went to uni. Uh, uni was good, graduated during COVID, which is interesting. Yeah, right. And okay. uh, yeah, uh, shooting a short film during COVID is uh, a lot of work. <laughs> and then now I'm here. This sort of, yeah. So how did you land the job with the bearded, the bearded chap? How did I land the job? Um, I actually don't really remember. I just replied. <laughs> wow, that was a big I, one. I applied to the, yeah, um, I applied to the job. Um, yeah. and then I showed up for the interview and it was running a, a podcast similar to this. Mm-hmm. And I got a call from Luke just like the day earlier and it's like, Hey, we've got this podcast set up, ready to go. Um, just need to press the record button and edit it after. And I'm like, yeah, sounds good. Uh, Roll up the first day, nothing's plugged in, nothing's working. <laughs> um, we're missing tripods, uh, missing heads to tripods. Uh, so I just had to grab. Um, and then on top of that, uh, Luke just goes, cool, talent's here in an hour. And I'm like, interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Appropriate response. <laughs> uh, yep. So I, I frantically. Uh, I'm looking on YouTube videos. Luckily, we're using an A10 Mini, which I was thinking of buying for myself, and a Rodecaster, which I'd done a ton of research on. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I knew somewhat how to use them. Only thing I hadn't known how to use is OBS. So all I had to figure out was how to get OBS of sound in an audio feed. Um, And then I just pressed the record button and hoped it worked. (laughs) Um, Podcast is all good. Um, It's up on our beta chat. YouTube channel mm-hmm. and all over Spotify and everything. And um, yeah, that's how I got the job. Because yeah, wow. I press the record button successfully. <laughs> you, you've actually got one up on Josh there. <laughs> yeah, there's been a, one that I've forgotten to press the record button on. Yeah. But oh, anyway, no. we, we'll uh, leave that one there. We'll move on. From, that, was, that was a long time ago. So. Very good. So you've gone from uh, a pretty common story, you've gone from a real interest in filmmaking into this sort of marketing, digital digital marketing sort of world. How have you found that transition and do you still do some, some filmmaking? Um, the transition has been, it's like, it's weird because it's similar but different mm. because film work, it's all about storytelling and the story comes first and like making sure you're entertaining the audience. But and then marketing People sort of forget that when it comes like to when you bring analytics and things into it, like reach and click rate and all the other analytical words. Um, so you just sort of, you got to keep trying to remind yourself they just trying to tell a story and get people engaged. Uh, what's the word? Truthfully. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But and then in filmmaking, like that's the forefront of everything. Okay. It's like you can't go away from it. But in terms of the, am I still doing film work? Yes. Um, I've recently released a music video. Um, I'm working on a TV show. Uh, I'm also uh, in post-production on a short film uh, about beer pong. Pretty cool. <laughs> Lovely. I like it. Yeah, nice, mate. So you still keep the, the fingers in those sort of super creative piles while, you know, what, what is reality sort of earning an income while, while you know, yeah. utilising your skills and getting better. Yeah, nice. So from a um, – from, you know, what you've learnt, uh, did you have any sort of on that on that marketing, social media side of things prior or was it just a real interest in filmmaking and, and the tech side of things? Um, the closest thing to marketing before I got the show was actually an internship with Ronald McDonald House, uh, oh, yeah. where they pretty much brought me on to shoot like a bunch of mini docs around mm-hmm. like their kids. There's like a mural at the South Brisbane um, hotel thing where they stay. Um, and I pretty much, and then I did like a mini documentary. I interviewed the artist and like just why it became a thing for the community, like why it was important to the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
Yeah, that was pretty much the only, that was the closest thing to marketing I've gotten before. This job also spent shooting spec ads for YouTube. Uh, not for YouTube, for uni. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Mm. Yeah, this is my first marketing experience for a job. Yeah. What's, um, what's been one of your big learning curves from jumping into the marketing world as opposed to just fully creative stuff? Trying to figure out, well, finding the connection between making videos and people buying things. Mm. That, yeah. Yeah. That's a very hard thing to, to put together. And I, it's just sort of been, uh, I guess the learnings from that would be uh, just to make things genuine and just, uh, tri- like you, you can't fake it. Mm. Um, very inspirational words, I'm saying. No, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's true. The, the authenticity of, of do, do, you, do you guys focus a lot on product? Do you focus a lot on people? Do, is um, there, is a bit there of any, both. A bit of both? Yeah, I see. Yeah, of, so, yeah. Um, so we do have, we have uh, lots of videos on like how we make our products and showing that we're, mm-hmm real people making products and that's like a very push to it. That's the reason why we make all those behind the scenes, um, like seeing people putting labels on bottles and mixing ingredients together and because that's what we do. We we spend eight hours a day here, five days a week, just mixing stuff into bottles mm. um, so that people can use them and enjoy it. Mm. Um, and then that's why we do that's why we, that's how a lot of our products come into it through that. And then there's also the showing that we're luxurious of that's like the cool product shot. Um, like the product videos, that's just like showing that. So I'm like, Oh, look at the cool label. Um, that's interesting. Uh, showing that it's made by a bearded man on the side and made in Australia and just like really pushing the luxury side of it. And then there's the, the, uh, education and the empowerment side which is like our uh, what the fact uh, WT FAQ mm-hmm. um, so we do a video every week uh, just sort of answering a question usually about men's grooming um, so uh, last week we did oh, what did we do last week? the week before that we did uh, specul- uh, guessing the top five haircuts in men's uh, for 2023. They're like, what are the best things? That was a kind of fun one. And then uh, we also do things like, what is beard oil? How to use beard oil? And then also uh, the history of grooming. That was a fun one to look into. Mm. Um, and like, so the more to educate and empower people to like, because uh, the idea behind that is when like we're in a room, like guys are in a room. We don't really talk about our grooming habits. Um, True. It's not, it's not a normal thing to do. Um, and we're trying to make that more normal because it, everybody does it. Everybody brushes their hair. Everybody, mm. like, <laughs> that's why I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> everybody, brush, everybody wears a hat for a reason. They, True. Like, yeah, they put effort into the stuff. They go get a haircut. They'll go. They'll yeah, put make beard themselves oil look on. nice so that yep. they can feel better. Put beard oil on. Yep. Um, but they'll intentionally make themselves look their best so that mm-hmm. they can feel their best. And that's why we do that side of the content. Yeah, that's good. I certainly see that the um, you know, the, the education side of things that you guys do, so, you know, sort of shopping your range, I've, I've you know, ended up on the Matt Clay stuff, the hair stuff, but – Looking at it, I like yep. I look at the website. I'm like, oh, I've got no idea what the difference between a pomade and a, if that's how you say it, and, and the other the other options you have for uh, your hairstyling stuff. And you're like, the Matt Clay, yeah, the Matt Clay. You know, I don't know what the yeah. difference is on all this stuff. But then finding videos, have a, yeah, finding videos that actually tell me the difference. Yeah. And, and I did, and I discovered that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's what. Okay, well, that's more the thing I'm after. Using that that media that resides. I mean, you talk a lot about, a lot about social media. And, and advertising, marketing, that sort of thing. But then there's actually the, the information stuff, which we are here actually working down the way in a systematic way where for one of our websites we run, 
I mean, there's about 5,000 products there, but but we're working on building, you know, probably a thousand plus videos that, that delve into um, particular products as to why you would use this, when you would use this, how it's used, that sort of thing. And so I think that education side of things is really critical and, and is also good marketing but is, is tied up because uh, it answers questions, solves, solves problems, which is, you know, a lot of what, what it needs to do. Yeah, it's a, it's a product breakdown video. So it's like the another reason behind that is also when you're searching these things, you're in a buying mindset. Um, so if you just find the right thing and you're already searching for the right thing and you find it, you, you just it. click the buy button. You just yeah. grab it. And like an, I do it all the time with cameras. <laughs> um, I do it all the time with like whatever I'm looking for. I'm looking for a new fridge, looking up video reviews for a fridge. Um, you, it's just a thing now and you just have to have that content there. You're into all the expensive things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, adult purchases. <laughs> wow, let's the not go down that path. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's another side. Mm. Yeah, Josh, have you? We, I, I had a question more around your because you know we deal with um, small businesses. We've got this marketed as, and sometimes creating a whole heap of content can be quite daunting. Um, do you have sort of a system or an approach that you take when you're planning out and scheduling your stuff in? Like, are you pre-planning uh, a lot of your stuff? Yeah, so in terms of pre-planning, um, we used to not do a lot of it, but and then I like structure, so I implemented it. Um, so the way we sort of do it is we get a big piece of content. So say a What the Fact series. Yep. Um, that'll be a, a two to six minute video. Uh, but and then in it, I'll write in... Uh, six points or something, five to six points, or even sometimes I do up to 10, 20. Yep. Um, and then I take those snippets and those are the reels. So I, there's the one big master piece of content and then I break that down into smaller pieces of content that can be shared across all different social media and then easily changed into whatever I need it to. Yeah, it's a very, I mean, that's exactly what we do. It's a very mm. effective way to produce content is to get your big filming out of the way and then just rip that apart and you then get 30 pieces of content from a video that you thought, oh, this is just one video. Can I take a bit further back on that question? One of the, the questions that I yeah. had for you is, is your your process in, in dreaming up that stuff. So obviously we've got a similar process where you, you sort of make a hero content, you grab a, a bunch of gear out that's nothing super new. It's a great thing to see deployed. But do you do all your team sit around and kick ideas around of sort of co topics and content or is there some some regular set content that you – sorry, some regular set topics that sort of revolve ideas around? How do you come up with your actual ideas for your creative? Um. That part's not so fleshed out because I am a one-man team over wow. here in the content mm. career part. Um, so we tried doing the whole sit-down, collaborate idea, um, and that ended up – we came up with weird things like milk <laughs> reviews and – Milk <laughs> reviews. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. We did a whole, like, five-part series on just reviewing milk. It was locked down. It was weird. Um, <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, so we keep, we kept uh, coming uh, up with weird ideas of that, and then not being able to link it back to yep to our the, brand. To the actual but I guess, topic. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, How were the milk reviews yeah, just, received? Actually, quite well. <laughs> 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 that sounds about right. People. People are very interested in, um, uh, it was cold pressed raw Jersey milk. Okay. Um, <laughs> Good. Delightful. I don't know why. <laughs> that's uh, People really liked it. That's the popular one. Okay. Yeah. So you, you've shied away a little bit from the, uh, the sitting down, collaborating and, and getting it. So what, what about you in terms of your, I mean, you probably, how, how many pieces of content a week are you sort of ballpark producing? Uh, mm -hmm. I attempt to do four, four YouTube, uh, four reels a day. Yep. Um, which will be put down on TikTok as well. That makes it eight, and yep. then put that on YouTube as well. That makes it twelve. Yeah. And plus, and then, uh, 
for anyone. Grumble. Um, so that makes it 16. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, so you can do, so that, yeah, 16 pieces of content, I guess. Yep. The and, and you're coming up with sort of four or five ideas a day that you're, you're covering off on. How do you, how do you draw um, your, I mean, and you, you, you're doing it from here upon a view, but like at the start of the week, like, what am I going to film this week? How do you get that creative idea? Is it, or is it just stuff you, do you, do you see what questions are being asked and you respond to that? Do you sort of have a big list that you've come up with together? How do you actually get those sort of ideas? Because a lot of a lot of small business people are like, all right, I should make heaps of content and they're like, uh, I don't know where to start or I don't know what to do. I don't know how to yep. actually develop that process. And shy of drinking a whole stack of gin and, and recording the conversation, um, have you got a more practical, less bad for your health option? Um, healthy? What are you talking part- about? Uh, a big part is um is just documenting so just pressing record and waiting for something to happen Mm -hmm. um so today we had um richard our sales manager he sat down with uh one of our brands and they did a live stream together uh whether it was just instagram live and then i managed to get their social media person to send me the live stream, the recording of the live stream. Mm-hmm. And then now I've got 10 pieces of content in like two hours of work. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, just like stuff like that. And then also, like say I get, even if I walk down to the re- warehouse, if I'm ever I'm working in the warehouse, like because we're behind in orders, I'll bring my phone with me and time lapse it. That's a piece of content. Yep. So it's like constantly documenting. I'm setting up this podcast, I time lapse it. I'm buying a 360 camera just so I can make the time lapses look cooler. Uh, <laughs> I guess but, it's, um, it's you, you seem to have like an a- attitude of a vigilance of like any opportunity to, to create something from it. You you sort of yeah yeah. We Josh does a fair bit. Um, the team do a fair bit of that here, but it, as well like any any opportunity that you you do like we we do these podcasts and usually prior to this podcast going up because we're just kicking around setting up pouring drinks that sort of thing we will live stream that on TikTok for, for different sort yep. of platforms and just talk to people and, you know, you pick up extra followers, you develop that sort of thing. You can always go back into that footage and and, and pull stuff out if you need to. Um, but just being, I guess, you're talking about documenting and also being vigilant of, of thinking about it like any time you're doing, start recording it. Have you, have you, do you go up to your, I know you bug your team members a fair bit, which is great. Um, do, do you go up with them with a camera and just start asking them sort of questions, in, both in, in a form that would perhaps produce a, a piece of video, but also produce some further ideas? Um, somewhat, yeah. Like, usually I just don't prep them at all. Um, I just go, I just point a camera at them and then say a stupid joke. Mm-hmm. Um, that I've either written or stolen off the internet. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, it's either they laugh or they don't laugh, and that's a piece of content. Um, and then also that creates engagement because even today we I had this video of like a pomade joke that was just a series of pomade puns um, that <laughs> Luke really? just did not get. Um, and then somebody in the comments just goes fire him, and I'm just like just because. The joke was fire, and I put a, a fire emoji, yeah. and then they brought back a bunch more pomad jokes, pomad puns, and it was great. <laughs> um, and that was like it just further the connection with that one person and the brand. Mm. That was like, yeah. have you um, have you done much with um, replies on the various socials? So we're so replying to that comment. Um, I've done a couple. Um, it's rare that we get a comment that you can do a video reply with. Um, but whenever somebody goes, where are you? Like there was one guy that goes, uh, I'm thinking of buying stuff, you know, explain, I did like a full on explainer video of like walking them through the office and like, I thought I cut it together and everything. And I was like, uh, throwing beard oil all over the place. Um, and then, no, you just asked what beard oil it was like what beard oil you should get and i was like oh i don't know we make beard oil i guess i just can just show you what we had and i just showed you showed what we had um 
And then he seemed to get a good response out of it. And then it's like, where are you? And I did like a Google Maps zoom in yep. of um, where we are. And this building doesn't exist on Google Maps yet. So I just zoomed on the green <laughs> plane. Perfect. Um, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, cool. I'll check it out. And bam, sale. I yeah, guess. nice. Yeah. I guess that the benefit of that is you've got other people watching who are perhaps asking similar questions that delve into that. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Ryan, if you were, um, you, you guys are a reasonably established business, um, but you're know, still a small small business uh, and you've been there for, for a little while now. If someone was starting out, perhaps they weren't in, the, in the, the point of being able to afford a videographer or external work done for them, but they were looking to sort of generate a bit of content on a regular basis, is there any tips you'd give them or sort of things you'd, you'd ask them to keep in mind that, that would actually help them to uh, – where, where would you put their focus Cool. Um, it depends on what you do mm-hmm. and like what product you have, what services you have. Because like there are plenty of. Oh, this is such a broad question. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I guess uh, try and do things that are like if you're. Going by yourself, you obviously have to run your business. Mm. So uh, I guess it'll just be trying to find ways to implement it into what you're already doing. Mm. Um, so say, uh, I'm going to take an example of a PT trainer. Yep. Um, if a PT would just record their like online sessions or even a gym session mm. and then just what like maybe give a discount to whoever's in the uh, thing in the social media or something, or I don't know how you how you implement it. That's up to you. Yep. Um, just record what you're saying. Take a snippet of an exercise and why you do that exercise. That's a piece of content. Mm. Like, and then you've got then you can just keep doing stuff like that. Um. So, yeah. Like I was even. You could even do. Yeah, I think I'm sure the basis of it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's really, uh, yeah, doc, doc, you know, filming filming what you're doing and just putting that yeah. out there. Just document it, really. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Any big any big projects on the horizon that you're keen keen for? Any sort of challenge or any types of content that you're going to sort of uh, put on the radar that you think is is trending well at the moment? Um, I'm interested in doing these specular based videos. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't exactly know how it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I've got one. I got one idea that you guys know about, that, um, yep. but I don't know if I want to say it. For, for someone um, watching, what, what do you mean by that that term? Uh, so, specular videos are pretty much a YouTube video. They're like twenty minutes, they're like a documentary, and they're based around a specular idea. So, like um, something that's crazy to look at. So. Mm-hmm clickbait that you follow through on. Yep. Um, it's, um, so say, so like classic is Mr. Beast where he'll go, like, I got 1,000 people to stand in a circle for six hours and the last person standing gets $100,000. Yep. He just makes that video. Yep. It gets a stupid amount of views. That's obviously not doable for a lot of people, but <laughs> sure. you can do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you can do a lot of things that don't cost that much money for anyone at all to do it. Like even Mr. V started as watching paint dry for X amount of hours. Yep. And like now he has a ridiculous following. All, all the followers. Spending, yeah. Yeah, he has all of them. Yes. Uh, opening up a burger store that'll fill out a whole shopping center for like three days. Yeah. So you're talking I, about sort of yeah. big, big, uh, Sort of, um, yeah, like, yeah, clickbaity titles, big sort of challenges or big, big sort of uh, interest things that's broad interest that um, sort yeah. of brings you along on a journey as you Well, go it on. doesn't really have to be big because, mm-hmm. like, you can do, like, again, watch paint dry or you something that. You can say Logan Paul 100,000 times. You can say Logan Paul 1,000 times. You can uh, count to 10 million. Mm. Uh, is that what he did? 
You, do? Um, yeah. you can, yeah, you can sit in a pool for twenty four hours. I don't know, um, but you just make you can do stuff like that. But you can also integrate it into your brand. So it's like, um, I'm thinking like we're doing. We could do making a hundred thousand beer oils in a day. Something ridiculous like that, or if we have to. That would require a lot of more prep. That's probably a lot. Okay. Um, we could do. Oh. I understand what you're saying. You're setting like this bigger Don't goal, and then and then working towards that goal. And people are like, are they going to reach it? Are they going to get yep. it? They're sort of on that journey with you to sort of achieve whatever it is that you've you've clickbaited along, but you've you know you're delivering on the actual the title and the promise that you're making. And seeing seeing how that Ooh. goes, yeah. Um, the one I was thinking of of uh, we've, we've got a, a PT coming on mm-hmm. as like a content creator guy, mm-hmm. and then I wanted to try and do one that was like a training for a powerlifting, like try and find the biggest powerlifting competition in Brisbane, yep. and train for it, and then just document it, yep. um, and see yes. what that's like. And then we could even, and then or it's either from my perspective or from Richard, a sales guy who has kids, works a full time job. Yep. And then join the path living competition. How cool would that be to follow? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I guess you're, you're following someone that you can actually, you can relate to and you can go, hey, like I work a nine to five job, but I kind of wanted to do this thing. Hmm. Like, oh, let's yeah. see how this guy actually goes about doing it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I like, like it. Interesting. 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 There's, there's a bottomless end of, um, of like small short form content content that can go with that plus your hero video oh. plus potential follow-up videos or anything along those lines so yeah that's really interesting it's, it's interesting it'll be interesting to see how you work in brand with that as well um mm, very good speaking of short form content if um, someone was to come to you and said oh i just want to focus on one social media what what platform would you choose as your top platform at the moment oh you've thrown him probably yeah. youtube YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'd say YouTube because um, you can actually build off. It's like designed for having a following that's actually interested in you. Mm-hmm. Yep. That, so it's like you're watching a 10 minute video. If you're watching a 10 minute video, you're sitting down and you're making time out of your day. It's a 30 second video. You're just scrolling past it, which is that's Instagram, TikTok. Uh, everywhere else um but if you're sitting down and watching like a 10 15 20 minute video that's a solid amount of, like you can do a lot of stuff in 10 minutes mm. i could do the dishes you could <laughs> clean your crazy room. Now. i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah you're investing that time in into what you're yeah, engaging you, highly and then youtube does have the, sh- the benefits of shorts as well yeah so it also gets that further reach of the quickly scrolling through mm. and then you can click on the channel and then watch the video to be actually interested. Into. Yeah, very good, man. Yeah. Very good. Excellent, Ryan. Well, thank you very much for joining us on this uh, first first sort of virtual guest uh, hangout uh, session. So I appreciate it, mate. All the best with the Bearded Chap and what you guys do in the future. And, and guys, if you're watching, go and follow the Bearded Chap and, and see what uh, Ryan's handiwork. And there's there's plenty of lessons by watching that channel and plenty of lessons for you guys to uh, to pick up on as well. They do a very good job. So thanks, Ryan. All the best with uh, with whatever power lifting you get yourself into. <laughs> and we, I'm expecting uh, that now. I'm, I'm going to be watching out. Exactly right, mate. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll <laughs> try to make it happen. <laughs> Easy done. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. <laughs>